Right, so for script four, we are now learning how to aggregate a time series to monthly intervals. If you look at the Chirps data, Chirps images represent a five day period of Pentad. So if you looked at each year, you will have images, six images for each month and 72 total images. If you looked at second year, it will be similar, 72 images and so on. Now, if you're doing a time series analysis and we want to compare month to month rainfall, because nobody really wants to know pentar to pentar rainfall, right? So we are usually working with month or yearly time steps. So what we want to do is we want to now run, take this time series and aggregate it into monthly time step. So we want to now take the first year's data and compute the total for each month, take the second year's data, compute the total for each month, and so on. But we want to do this programmatically. We don't want to manually do this for every year in a time series. So let's learn the map reduce technique to be able to take this time series and aggregate it into whatever time interval we want. So we'll start working on script 4A. We're doing this for one year just to learn first. You can do this for all years later on. So we have the year defined as 2019 and we have start and end days defined here. And we have filtered this data for one year. And as seen previously, we get 72 images. I want to aggregate this into one image per month, which is the total rainfall for each month of this particular year. Again, how we learned, we, to do this, we first create a list of months and then we map a function that takes each month as input, advances, creates a filter from the start and end date, creates a sum and returns that. So let's uh, write the code for this. We'll create a list of months, ee list dot sequence one to 12. We'll write a function. We'll name this function as create monthly image. This function will take the number of the months, so first month, second month, third month, and we'll use this to create the uh, start and end date for each month. You can do it many ways. Uh, this one is uh, the most simpler implementation uh, than what we learned earlier. So let's do this. So if given a month number, how do we create that month's image? We need a start date. What's the start date at the beginning of month N? What would be the start date at the beginning of month M? Can anybody help me with that? So if you use this function, what will be year, month, and day for the start of the month M? Year is already here, right? So this is our year, 2019. What will be the month? It will be M, whatever month we're computing for. And start will be day one. So this will be the start date for the given month M. What is the end date? Well, we could use something like this, but then we'll be stuck with, is it a 28-day month, 30-day month, and so on, right? So instead, we can just say start date dot advance one month. And let the Earth Engine API take care of all the math behind the dates. So whatever the month started, we'll advance by one month. We'll take care of all the leap years and month, different days, the months, and so on. We have start and end date. How do we compute the total precipitation? Well, we'll just apply our filter. We'll create a month filter data set a variable and we'll take our year filter data. So this is got all images for one year. We'll further filter it down to that month. So this will have only the images for that particular month. And what was the monthly total rainfall? It'll be month filter dot sum or reduce e reduces sum. You can use whichever syntax. So now we have computed an image of the monthly total rainfall, and we can return this. So given any month number, we get that month's image. Let's get our monthly images. With months dot map this function. Now we get a list of 12 images. Right? For each month of our list, we get one image. That image represents the image for that particular month, the total rainfall of that. This is how you aggregate time series 
whatever time step you need, you first create a list of those time steps, write a function that creates image for each time step and map a function and you get your aggregated time series. When you are working with Earth Engine and image collections, for the image collections to behave correctly with filters and charts and other functions, the images need at least one property describing the time step. Right now we have this 12 images. We don't really know what was the time of this, right? Is it January, February? We don't really know what month this particular image represents. So if you're trying to chart it or filter it, it won't work here. So when you're creating new images in Earth Engine, you should always set a property for this timestamp. So that is done using this function called set, which takes a dictionary. So we can set some properties. To set a property, you can say, give the name of the property and the value. So right now, just set a property called month. And this will now have one property with the number of the month, right? So this is month number two, three, and so on. For the collections to behave properly, we should have the timestamp, which is in this special property called system underscore timestamp. This should have the timestamp of that particular image. What is the start of this image? Well, we already know the start image, right? So this is start date. So this is the, the start value. The start date is a date object. This particular property stores the value as in milliseconds. So it has to be a number. So let's learn a little bit about timestamps. So timestamps in Earth Engine are represented in milliseconds. They're also known as Unix timestamps. It's easier to do date math when you have numbers. If you have two dates and you want to compute how far apart they are or do some math, it's easier if you just have a single number representing that. So the way it, dates are typically stored in programs is that you compute the number of milliseconds since midnight of 1st Jan 1970, and you count how many milliseconds have elapsed since then. And that's a number that you get for the particular date. So uh, I'm going to comment out this part. Let's learn about how the date math works. So we have our, let's say I have my date. We print the date. You can see this is the date object. And if I want to know how many milliseconds have elapsed in 1971, there is this helper function called millis which will tell you that this is the number that represents the date. This many milliseconds have elapsed since 1971, uh, 1970, and you can use that. If I change the date, you'll see that the number will be different. If this was 2020, the timestamp would be different. This is also known as Unix timestamp. Anybody knows why 1970? Yeah, so the smart people who invented this, they thought, oh, there were no computers before 1970. We'll never need to know about what happened before 1970. So they used uh, as, as a base year. What happens for 1960? What do you think will be the answer? The base year, and you get negative number. Uh, nowadays, we are doing a lot of work with climate data set. So if you look at any climate data set and you see the timestamp, the base year is usually 1800, 00. Right? So first Jan 1800 would be the base year in a lot of the climate data set. But in Earth Engine, timestamps are used as Unix timestamp. So it's always milliseconds since 1970. And you can use this dot millis to compute that. So let's come back to our code. We'll have our start date and we'll set the timestamp as this. And now you can see each image has the property with the month number and the system colon time start. You only need time start as a property. You can set system colon time end if you wanted to, uh, but the one that is required is the system colon time start. So this will work, but you can also set system colon time end if you wanted to. So we've now learned how we take this pentard images and turn this into an image collection of 12 images. But wait, we started with an image collection of 72 images. We ended up with a list of 12 images, it's still a list because we had a list, we mapped a function and we call a list of images. So again, it's not an image collection yet. It's still a list of images. 
And if you try to apply a filter or the functions, it won't work. It'll say, oh, you're trying to run this on a list. It's not a collection of images. So we'll turn this into a collection. So I'll create a new variable for monthly call. And there's a helper function called e image collection from images. Give a list of images, it turns it into an image collection object. So now we take this and give the monthly images list. And if you print this, the only change we made is we've casted this to a different data type. So it's the same images, but now instead of a list, they are in an image collection. And that allows us to run all the functions that you could do on an image collection. All right, let's do the exercise. 